Hi everyone. My name is Chanel Williams. I am one of the conference organizers. Um, haven't been in this space very much, been organizing outside, but um, we'd like to welcome to the stage Leslie Salmon Jones and her husband, Jeff Jones. They are the creators of Afro Flow Yoga. Um, Leslie Salmon Jones hails from Toronto, and she's a professional dancer and yoga instructor. Her work with Afro Flow Yoga combines dance movements from the African diaspora with the meditative qualities of yoga, allowing for the unique intersection of culture and self-care. Please welcome Leslie Salmon Jones and Jeff Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Chanel, and we are so excited to be here. And um, thank you for the organizers of this incredible conference. So just want to give you all a round of applause. Thank you so much. And um, so my husband, Jeff, and I, we created Afroflow Yoga. Let's say we designed it. And um, I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, it's, it's a design. It actually, we often say it came through us. So it was really a, a gift of the ancestors. Um, my background is in dance. I trained at Alvin Ailey, and Alvin Ailey was an incredible designer as well of dance. Have people heard of Alvin Ailey? Yes. <laughs> Good. And, um, and Jeff is an incredible musician and also an engineer. So we met 23 years ago. I was three, and he was five. <laughs> and yeah, it's a true story. And, uh, and we've been married for 21 years. So we've been on this journey together. And uh, Jeff's background is in uh, multiple instruments. You can tell them a little bit about your instruments. Are you yes. on? Yes. First of all, I'm a bass player. The main thing about me is I'm a bass player and singer. However, when I was age 12, my dad's bass drummer gave me a set of bongos, and I really got into the percussion. But um, my background goes back to 18, well, actually, you could go back to 1820 with one of the slave, uh, enslaved Africans that was brought back. We were able to trace that back thanks to the IRS because people had documented as like cargo or bag of coffee. Everything was taxed. Anyway, um, my parents, uh, we grew up across the river in Alston and my grandfather bought the house there in 1917. That's on one side of the family. I'm sorry, 1915, so we've been there 102 years. We've lived in New York and many other places, but we've kept the house and moved back. Uh, my my great-grandmother was born in Wilmington, um, in, uh, sorry, Norfolk, Virginia, in 1863. She came to, somehow somebody brought her to Alston when she was 11, and this is not that same side of the family that bought the house there. On the other side of the family, I come from a family of musicians. My grandmother was an organist born in 1890, and she was one of the classical and old Negro spirituals um, grew up in the United Methodist Church. Her mother, which is the one, the great-grandmother, um, she was the one that came from North, um, North Carolina, I'm sorry, um, North, I'm uh, sorry, Norfolk, Virginia, sorry, so many people. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the, the music side goes back to different, different folks that we've um, come, well, Roland Hayes was one of my grandmother's colleagues and maybe even she was a mentor to him and Marion Anderson. So music and healing music, spiritual music has always been in the family. And I've, I've been a bass player in many, sub for many bass players in many churches, so it kind of goes back. So we've incorporated the spirituality into Afroflow Yoga, the, the music and movement. Beautiful, thank you, thank you. So, when I met, before I met Jeff, I, I actually prayed for, to meet a soulmate who was rich, <laughs> ah, wait for it, in ancestry. 
and that's this man here. So we celebrate the connection of the roots system. So this is what we do in Afroflow Yoga briefly. And we're going to get moving. Don't you worry. We're going to move the body. Um, so when I, I grew up in Toronto, Canada of um, Jamaican ancestry, and uh, my mother was a, and still is, a civil rights activist, human rights activist, and a grassroots politician. So growing up, she did a lot of work around diversity and inclusion in Toronto and urban planning. And so this was part of the conversation at our dinner table. My father, who had been orphaned, was one of Canada's first black chief of surgery. And he, uh, I grew up working for him in his office and understood the health disparities. Like, so they planted seeds in terms of, we can actually be agents of change in changing our environment, uh, our internal environment, and our external environment. We can actually co-design uh, what it is that where we're living inside and externally. And then when I was living in New York, I came to yoga through uh, Alvin Ailey. It was a requirement back in 1991. So way ahead of the time. And yoga is a tradition. Do people, have people taken yoga, done yoga, practice yoga? Right? How many people knew that yoga has been in Africa for thousands of years? Ha! Ah. One, two, right? Yeah, so on the hieroglyphics in ancient Egypt, you've seen <laughs> yoga. So yoga is within all of us. Uh, we see the animals practicing yoga all the time. When we were babies, we were stretching and moving. So when I was growing, when I was in New York City, I was working in Harlem, doing a lot of work in Harlem and in Brooklyn with childhood obesity, uh, the health disparities, as Courtney so beautifully laid out. Thank you, Courtney, for that. Um, we have a lot of issues going on in our communities due to uh, colonization and oppression. Uh, Jeff and I, after three of our parents passed away, we went to West Africa. We went to Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, and Benin. And we visited the slave castles, which are really dungeons. And we did that because we wanted to connect to the root system of, of uh, where we come from. And, and when we were in the slave castles, if you're not familiar with these dungeons, it's a real uh, journey to, it's, a, it's like a answering the prayers of your ancestors. Because if anyone's forced from their home, you're going to want to go back home. And so we were answering the prayers, this is in 2007. And there we learned the design and the methodologies of slavery and dehumanization. And that was, people had PhDs in this. How do we break people down, strong people down, who are very, you know, come from strong spiritual backgrounds, family units? And one of the ways is through conquering and dividing, right? Conquering and dividing through taking away food that will strengthen you. Um, in the slave castles, there's, there's a place called the door of no return. So psychologically, this is where the mental illness starts coming in, um, psychologically thinking that you'll never return. Uh, and so kind of thinking about, oh, the work that I was doing in the 90s and then seeing the root. And then understanding that yoga in Africa has been for thousands of years and there's beautiful ancient knowledge that we've been disconnected from. So this ancient knowledge that we've been disconnected from is like the awakening through our bodies. And this is, I'm talking for everyone, all humans, really, through our bodies is a way to tap into that deep cellular wisdom, the DNA. So we're connected through nature, right? We can all relate to the, the wind and, 
and the ocean, the water, we're 80% water, right? We, are, we go back into the earth, we're earth, we're fire, we're the sun. And right now, the waters are dying. There's only 1% of the water on the planet that is drinkable. So the reason I'm going into all of this is because we have a great opportunity right now to flip the script and to design communities and to take care of ourselves to set up for future generations. Thinking about um, the design of a lot of African villages and indigenous villages, many have been designed in the form of a circle. And the circle creates community, it connects people to their hearts, it also, there's no, uh, there's, it's a continual circle, so we have the elders included, the children included, we can story, tell, and share, we can problem solve in a circle. So we actually create, we teach all of our Afroflow classes in a circle. So thinking about bringing back circle, the grid system is designed to make us feel separate and also fearful of what's behind the walls. So just planting a little bit of um, ideas around, around inclusion, self-care, and, uh, and the connection to the environment. I actually had a little bit of an epiphany the other day, and uh, the epiphany was that I've been talking a lot about colonization and the effect of colonization in the body, in our communities. There's collective trauma. We've been doing a lot of work uh, here with Liz Walker, Reverend Liz Walker's church at Roxbury Presbyterian Church, trauma healing program, because we have collective trauma. We have trauma we've inherited from legacies of oppression. And we also have, we have um, good stories. So thinking about how we can flip the script from being victims to victorious by tapping into that deep wisdom. And lastly, before we get moving, I want to just, the other epiphany I had was about this notion of colonization. And the first thing to be colonized was really the earth. You know, the conquering and dividing of the earth. Like we own the earth, you know, I want a piece of it, right? And then we conquer and divide the water, and we conquer and the water and the taps, and the animals and the women and the you know, people of color, and it's, it's a, a little somewhat of an illness, creating mental illness. So I just think about self-care and, you know, the ideas of through meditation, through yoga, through going deep into um, practice of, of calming the nervous system, for example. Uh, these are ways that we can kind of begin to pra practice self-love and then love and healing for the community. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get us moving a little and begin to embody some of these things that I'm talking about. So I invite you to uncross your legs, to put your cell phones down, to take your shoes off. You can come down here. You can just allow yourself. I'm going to take my sweater off. You can get yourself cozy. We're going to do a little bit of movement. And then if we have a little time for some Q&A and comments, we'll do that too. So there's space over here. You can come over here if you'd like. Spread your wings. Make space. Yes. Oh, you're ready. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Now, we can't all come down here. <laughs> but if anyone wants to join me on stage, there's space on stage. My friend, my beautiful... Yes! Thank you. What's your name? Sharon Sutton. Sharon Sutton. Thank you. 
Dr. Sharon. I am honored to be in your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Anyone else want to come? You're good? Everyone have space? Yes, yes. Come, 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 come. All right. Good. Now, and what's your name? Denise. Denise. Ende. Ende. Jasmine. Wonderful. Great. So are we ready, Mr. Music Maestro? We are, yes. Good. So if you're sitting down, that's perfectly fine. If you're standing, that's perfectly fine. Wherever you're comfortable. So make yourself comfortable. And one of the first things that really helps me is to connect with breath. Breath is life. The first thing we do when we're born is we inhale when we come out of the womb. And then the last thing we do as we leave our bodies is exhale, release, let go. So breath is life. We're constantly finding that inhalation and exhalation. So I invite you to stand or sit wherever you're comfortable. And you can bring your feet hip distance apart, feeling your feet rooted on the earth, feeling that connection of the earth, grounded and rooted, feeling the crown of your head, maybe even tap the head here. Yeah, wake those cell brains, those beautiful cells in the brain, and then connect it to the sun. Imagine the golden light above you. And then you can place your hand on your belly, one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, wherever you're comfortable. And in this moment, I invite you to close your eyes or soften your gaze and bring the awareness to the rise and fall of your breath. Just notice in this moment where the breath is entering your body and where it's exiting your body. Notice if your heart is beating. Notice the rise and fall of your breath, maybe in your belly or in your chest. Just take a moment to settle. And here, I invite you to begin to take some deep belly breathing as you inhale, fill your belly like a balloon. And exhale, take a sigh. It's about three more times. Inhale and fill. And exhale and empty. And inhale and fill. And exhale as you empty, relax a little more. And one more deep, energizing breath. Inhale. And exhale and let go. Ha. Beautiful. And then let your hands relax down. Take a soft bend in your knees, or if you're sitting, just feel your knees, feel your feet. Good. And stay connected to that beautiful breath and begin to roll your shoulders around. So hearing the sound of your breath is really helpful. Sound is powerful. Each planet has its own vibration. So we all have our own healing vibration. And then reverse, inhale and exhale. You might notice you carry a little tension in your shoulders. I know sometimes I do. So use this as an opportunity to let go. <sighs> Just let go. Beautiful. And then inhale and lift your chin up toward the sky. And then exhale, draw your chin down toward your heart. And inhale up toward the sky, and exhale down toward your heart. Beautiful. And inhale, chin rises, and exhale and lower. And inhale, chin rises, and exhale. Beautiful. Begin to slowly circle your head around. And relaxing the neck and shoulders, here you might begin to notice some sounds. Sounds like maybe Rice Krispies. Do not be alarmed. 
That's natural. It's, we're releasing the synovial fluid and reverse. So speaking of design, begin to imagine that beautiful design of your body, the skeletal system, the muscular system, circulatory system, all of the beautiful systems that are working. Beautiful. And lift your chin up and reach the left arm up toward the sky and right arm down toward the earth. Big stretch. Beautiful. Inhale and exhale. Stretch, spreading your fingers wide. Beautiful. Inhale and exhale. You are amazing and beautiful beings. And inhale and exhale. Good. Coming back to center, placing your hands on your hips and lift your heart up toward the sky. And then round your spine, that area between your shoulder blades, stretch it. And inhale, heart rises. And exhale. Begin to bring energy into your spine. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale, heart rises. And exhale. Beautiful job, everyone. Come up through center, and we're going to begin to circle the hips around. Now, I have a feeling that many of you sit at the computer a lot, maybe. Just... So, and I'm assuming that you don't really do this at your computer, but if you do, you get bonus points. That's great. Now, all of these things, you can reverse it, that we're doing, these are great little things to just reset. So if you are at the computer, you can do this. If you're in class, can we, can we do this in class? Okay, all right. Okay, you got the approval. The doctor said yes. <laughs> Beautiful. And then come all the way up and reach your arms up. Now here, we've had a lot going on in this country, in the world, and the nervous system has been a little frayed. So we're going to start restoring the nervous system. So imagine you're a tall tree, so root down. You have branches and leaves, and it's the fall. So what do trees do in the fall? Shake off the dead leaves. So we're going to shake them off. And we're going to do this for 30 seconds. And you can do it as fast as you can. Go, go, go. Use your breath. Go, shake, shake, shake. You can shake anything. Doesn't matter what you shake. Just shake, 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 shake. Go, 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 go. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. You have 10 seconds. Go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now inhale. And slowly, very slowly lower it down. And just place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, and notice how you feel. Is your heart beating? Are you breathing a little deeper? Just notice. Take a sigh. Beautiful. Is your cell phone ringing? <laughs> All right. So now, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to just begin to move. So Jeff is giving us a little drum. Good. So begin to feel your feet on the earth. Oh, I didn't mention one thing. Whatever happens here stays here, OK? No judgment. So now just move. Use your breath. That's it. Good. So connect to the earth. 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 You can even say it. You can speak. You can dance. You can shout. Oh, yeah. That's it. All right. Now, connect to the sky. Reach. 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 Beautiful. That's it. Feeling that light in the sky coming into your heart. Now, branch of the heart. 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 Oh, you got this. You got this. You all got this. That's it. Just move. Beautiful. Are you breathing? All right. Now, we're going to go. Heart. Heart. Now, what I'm going to invite you to do, this is from your heart 
to my heart, to each other's, is just send someone next to you, behind you, some love. Some love! What a concept! just for about 30 seconds, just move in any way that feels natural to you. Let it go, let it flow, no judgment. Use your breath. Good. That's it. Now, for collective trauma, what animals do is they just shake. So we're gonna do a little group shake. Are you ready? Are you ready? You ready? Are you ready? Shake, 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 shake. Just let it go. Whoop. Shake, shake, shake. That's it. Let it go. Shake it up. And then shake it down. And then shake it to the heart. And then stir it up like Bob Marley. Take it to the earth. From the earth to the sky. Big breath in. And exhale through your heart. Back to the earth. Last one. Big breath. In. And back to the heart. Beautiful. And just rest here for a moment. And just imagine all that we can co-create, all that we can design, the present, and for future generations. Just take that into the cells and the organs. Mm. Beautiful. Good. How are we feeling? Are we feeling good? Thank you. Thank you. I have my new friend. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. So we have probably, I just want to check. I want to. Do uh, we Don't worry I'm just do about a thing. Should I just end it? Every little thing is going to be all right. Okay. Yeah. Rise up this morning. Okay. Feed it on bed. Thank you all for participating. Um, I just wanted to take maybe about five minutes. If anyone has a burning question around self-care, a piece of wisdom they want to share, anything, anything, anything that you want to call into the room. Yes, and we have, I think we have someone with a mic. Yes. <coughs> Do we have someone with a mic? Mm. I think it's going to happen for you. But in the meantime, I'm going to stand up. Here we go. Thank you. Hi, Yvonne. Here we go. Thanks. Save the day. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, so I'm a student, and I have kind of a busy schedule, and I'm sure uh, that the same can be said for a lot of people here. I was just wondering, how would you recommend fitting something helpful like meditation into like a pretty packed schedule? That is a great, great question. So the question was, 
you have a real packed schedule, and how would we suggest getting meditation and movement into a packed schedule? Come take our class in Cambridge, number one. <laughs> but number two, this is, a, this is so important because sometimes we feel we have to go and do an hour and a half or two hours of something, right? So there's something called energy management where we can actually manage our energy as opposed to our time. So uh, when we are stressed out, we feel like we don't have enough time, that stress creates fatigue. So it's sometimes good just to unplug from the computer, from whatever you're doing. You only need maybe one or two minutes just to sit and notice the breath, notice the earth going out in nature. Taking a couple of deep breaths can really, really change it, or just resting just allowing yourself to rest. Meditation is a funny thing because there's like a dance that people get into with meditation, like, I'm gonna sit and meditate, and then you start arguing with yourself because you're thinking too much. Does anyone ever have that? Has anyone tried that? And it's like this dialogue, and then you're like, oh, I'm not doing it, I, I, I'm a failure, whatever it is. Well, that's not helpful, but it's something. So one of the things, I have a, um, a co, facilitator that I work with, her name is Sharon Salzberg, and she goes around the world talking about meditation. And she teaches a really good practice, and the practice is about beginning again. So with meditation, if you're just sitting and just focusing on your breath for a minute, and you have 50,000 thoughts that are going on, that's natural. So it's the moment where you realize you're not focusing on your breath and you have the 50,000 thoughts. What do you do? Do you argue with yourself or do you just begin again? So it's just the beginning again. And knowing that you can incorporate, you can take the stairs. My dad, who was a surgeon, he didn't have a lot of time to uh, exercise, but he would take the stairs. And he was strong. So there are things that you can do that don't have to, requ don't require going to the gym or doing all these things. Just a little bit goes a long way. Yes. Hi, my name is Sophia Transtamar. For those moments that we are, so I, I deal with affordable housing, and I deal with a lot of individuals who um, tax on my mental health in the moment, in a meeting, <laughs> that I do not have the time to stand up, walk away, take the stairs, and stretch. So are there some um, resources that you can give to me that I can use in the moment when zebra is showing their stripes and my heart is racing and I'm trying to stay professional but keep in mind my mental health and bring back down all the energy. I want to bring back good energy in my body in this meeting at that moment. Mm, Sophia, that is a great question. <laughs> Sophia, that, that would resolve all the world's problems. So. This is where the practice of self-care comes in, because it's a practice, it's not a perfection. We are humans, we are gonna be in those moments, and we're gonna notice that we're getting pissed off. So practicing outside of those moments is great, and so that when you're ready, you have your tools, right? You got your toolkit, okay. Zebra is really getting on my nerves. You feel the heart going, so what do you do? I, my feet are on the floor. My heart is beating, so I've got to breathe because my body's looking for oxygen, okay? Also, I, my mom, who was a um, politician, she had a lot of, in a white dominant community, she had a lot of daggers, you know, boom. And she taught me, like, water off of a duck's back. You do not have to absorb that. You do not, we do not have to take it in. Because when we do, that's when we get sick, that's when we get tired, that's when we get drained. Knowing that we all have stuff, it's not, it's, you know, recognizing it's someone else's stuff, it's not yours, and sometimes it's a system that you have no control over. But what you do have control over, this is the moment of how you react. So it's being proactive. And that's why self-care is so important to practice outside of those moments. So you're like, it's like a martial artist, like, you know, I'm ready. You got it in you. I don't know if that helped, Sophia.
That's it. That's it. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. I was going to say, even if you hear, you can, if it's in the moment, you, you can hear your, your breath in the back of your throat going down. Sometimes that helps calm you. Just listen to that. Breathe slowly when things are going on. And it's like, Calgon, take me away for just a few seconds. You know, because you can kind of hear it. And it kind of helps calm things down. If you make, even make some tones in the back of your, your head, you can hear those yeah. faint sounds. So sound really helps. Are we out of time now? We're out of time. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs>